lot of people know my famous F-150 story. It's literally, I forget I got a lot of garages. So a lot of people know my famous F-150 story. It's how people understand creative finance. Let's take a look at what, what do we got in the garage? What do we got, what kind of hardware we got over here? This is probably the fifth or sixth F-150 that I've owned in my life. Well, I haven't used this in a while. This whiteboard is crusty and dusty, bro. I can tell you that seller finance and creative finance is one of these things that just confuses people. So what I wanna do in this video today, guys, is really get you to understand what creative finance is, and then we're gonna do something really fun on this little series. So creative finance is the process of buying anything. And it's not until I tell the same story about a thousand times that people actually start getting to understand what the heck creative finance is. But I would tell you the most impactful story that I tell that I see the difference in people's faces is all about an F-150. So let's talk about what seller finance is or what creative finance is. So creative finance, it is the process of buying anything. It's not just about houses, cars, businesses. It's about buying anything without the use of three things typically. So I don't have to use my credit. I have never used my credit to buy the last hundreds and hundreds of houses I've bought. Don't use credit, literally not using credit, okay? Um, you're not using credentials when you buy with creative finance. What is a credential? A credential is like my W-2 job, proof of income, my bank statements, how long I've been at my job, my job history, those types of things, those are credentials. I have not had anybody ask me um, when I bought that sub two Kia, when I bought this sub two house, when I've bought sub two apartment buildings. It does not matter. Nobody's ever asked me for my credit or my credentials, zero, 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 zero. I've gotten none of that requested. In fact, when I bought this house with creative finance, the day we closed out, grow or finalize the transaction and I became the owner, I had like 700 bucks in my account. And I was like, good thing they didn't check my bank account because I didn't have any money today to even buy anything. And then the third thing you rarely use is cash. And what's cool about this is in creative finance, if you do need to use cash, you can actually use somebody else's like your uncles or your cousins or whatever. When I go buy a house and I go down to Wells Fargo, Chase, Bank of America, whatever, and I go apply for a loan, are they gonna let me borrow money for my down payment? Absolutely not. But in creative finance, if I don't have cash, I can go borrow money from a private money lender and my private money lender, nobody cares where the down payment comes from on a creative finance transaction. And so it makes it incredibly easy because there's no requirement for credit, there's no requirement for credentials, and there's very little, if any, requirement for cash. So that's it in a nutshell. So let's get a little bit deeper. This is one of my most famous stories of all time. I've got a deal. You guys can actually pull up the address. I don't know if YouTube will like this or not. Are we not allowed to talk about addresses on here? No addresses. Okay, I'm gonna say it anyway, and you can, ble you can bleep me out. So right here in Phoenix, Arizona, I live up here in Mesa, and then you've got um, this little house down there in Lower East Mesa, okay? Let's just call the house 78th place. So I get a wholesaler, calls me up, and this wholesaler calls me up and they say, hey Pace, I've got a seller that has a property on 78th place named Susan, and she has a property with tenants inside of it that she wants to sell. Unfortunately, Susan is saying she wants $110,000 for this property, and Zillow is saying that it is worth only $100,000. Well, most people would look at that and go, that doesn't make sense. Why would I pay $10,000 over? Like most investors called wholesalers, these guys are typically looking for about 60 to 70% of the total Zillow number. They're gonna come in and go, I wouldn't pay anything over 60 or 70%. That's kind of like the rule of thumb. Some of them are, are looking for 50%. Right? So they'll come to Susan and they'll offer her $50,000. They'll offer her $40,000, $60,000, and they'll sit there and negotiate with her over and over. And the wholesaler is gonna get her under contract, let's say for 50 grand, and then that wholesaler is gonna sell that off to um, a fix and flipper for 60,000, giving the wholesaler a $10,000 profit, right? That's how wholesale works in a, in a nutshell. Well, here's the problem. All these people that are sitting there offering money to Susan, Susan says, there's no way I'm selling this property to you for anything lower than $110,000. Don't waste my time with anything lower than $110,000. Most people know I'm the creative finance guy. So Tom calls me up and says, hey Pace, would you be willing to go and meet Susan at the property 
and see if you can negotiate her from 110 down to $50,000. Wholesaling is way harder than creative finance because in creative finance, the, the main goal in a, talking to a seller, the main goal is getting a number that both of you can agree on. The problem with when you're wholesaling, you gotta get Susan under contract at 50 cents on the dollar of what her property's worth. In creative finance, I can actually pay exactly what she wants. Tom calls me and says, Pace, you wanna work your magic with Susan and see what she can, you know, what she'll sell the property to for me. I go, yeah, of course. So what ha ends up happening is I go over to the property and I end up having a great conversation with Susan. Her motivation in selling was, I want to move around the country in an RV and I wanna travel around and I wanna take some of this money and I wanna basically utilize it for the next 10 years and travel around the country. And I go, okay, so she doesn't actually need the money right now, she just needs the money incrementally. Ding, 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 seller finance. So I go to Susan and I said, hey Susan, I imagine all of these people like Tom and other investors are probably giving you $50,000, $60,000 offers. Is that correct? She says, yeah, how'd you know that? And I go, because if I was going to pay cash, that's what I would pay too. I would pay 50, 60 cents on the dollar. And she goes, well, what do you mean? If you, if you were going to pay cash, what other way would you pay? And I said, I would pay you in terms. And she looks at me like this. She goes, eh, what? I don't know what terms means, right? And I, do, I say the word terms on purpose to kind of get their head to go, hmm? What'd you say? So what I told uh, Susan, as I said, look, Susan, forget about Tom, okay? This is about me and you. You're looking for $110,000. That's what I know. And I would be willing, this is the line. This is how I convert people from a cash conversation to a creative conversation. So I go to Susan, I go, Susan, I would be willing to come up to your number if you would be willing to give me terms. There we go. There's that word terms again. She had no idea what the heck that meant. And so what did I do? She says to me, she goes, what's terms? I go, well, let me tell you a story about an F-150. I then went to t tell Susan this story. And I used the story, the F-150 story, to tie into how I'm gonna buy her house. I started nuancing and I said, well, Susan, here's the thing. I used to, I used to own a construction company and I had this F-150. It was a blue, not that you care, but I want you to paint it in your mind. It's a blue four door and it hit 320,000 miles on that truck. And I told you it's a Ford F-150. Not a Toyota Tacoma that can go a million miles, it's a Ford and it started having problems. And so I decided, Susan, that I was going to sell this truck and I was going to take that money, whatever it is, and reinvest it into another truck. And she's like, okay, what does this have to do with my house? I go, well, Susan, how did you come up with the price of your house, the 110? And she says, well, I looked it up on Zillow. I go, okay, great. So if I go to sell a truck, where do I typically go? What's the Zillow for cars? And she says, oh, Kelly Blue Book, right? KBB.com, that's where you go to find out the value of a car. And I go, okay, just like you, I go to Kelly Blue Book and I go, all right, Kelly Blue Book says my truck is worth $5,000. And I go, Susan, I'm crazy, just like you, I'm belligerent. I want a specific price. There's no way I'm selling this truck for $5,000. So I'm crazy and I decide I'm gonna go list this on Craigslist. I'm gonna add five grand on this because I'm crazy, just like you, Susan. She laughs, right? And I am going to go put this on Craigslist for $10,000. Just like you saw on Zillow that Zillow says this property was worth 100, you went and put this on the market for 110. She goes, yeah, you're right. Like, I just know people are gonna lowball me. I wanted to protect myself a little bit. And I go, okay, no problem. Why don't we figure out how I can get you to your $110,000 number, just like I figured out how to sell my truck for exactly what I wanted. I said, so I go to Craigslist and I list my truck on Craigslist for $10,000. Did I sell that truck, Susan, for $10,000? She's like, mm, yes. And I go, no, I didn't. I didn't even get a phone call. Three months goes by, okay? Three months goes by, I don't get a phone call, a text. I don't even get somebody being angry with me and saying, who the hell do you think you are trying to sell this truck for $10,000? I just thought, like literally nobody, nobody reached out to me for three months. So my wife comes into the story and my wife says, hey, this is Laura. And she says, hey, sweetheart, that truck is in the driveway. And every day I come home, I gotta kind of navigate around it in the driveway. Is there any way you could get that truck like sold? as fast as possible. I'm like, babe, what the heck do you want me to do? I, I, I don't think it's worth five grand. And if I put it on Craigslist for five grand, which is what Kelly Blue Book says it's worth, I'm just gonna get lowballed, and somebody's gonna come in and say, oh, an all cash offer for $3,000. And I said, Susan, does that sound like what's happening to you? 
She says, yes, that's exactly what's happened to me. If I, if I put it for 100, which is what Zillow says it's worth, I would even get lower cash offers. I go, there you go. So here's what I figured out. I'm sitting there with my wife and my wife stops and she says, well, aren't you the creative finance guy? And I go, yeah. And my wife says, well, why don't you just sell it and take payments for it? And I'm like, okay, yeah, why didn't I think of that? So I literally go back to Craigslist and I change one thing. I literally change one thing. I said, I kept my price at 10,000. This is what I said. I said, we'll take payments. Susan, do you think I sold that truck for $10,000? And she was like, probably. I go, I actually sold that truck for $12,500. And I found a gentleman named Jose who gave me $1,000 as a down payment. And he owed me $11,500, which he made $350 payments to me for the next four years. What I actually received on this 12 grand was $15,000 plus on a truck that Kelly Blue Book told me was only worth 5,000 bucks. And then all of a sudden, Susan says, I understand creative finance. So that is how I explain to people what is seller finance. I own a truck that's worth five grand, but I sold it for 12,500 because I was willing to give the person buying it from me the ability to make payments to me over a period of time. It's the same thing with my camera guys, okay? If they wanna go buy a, an expensive camera or an expensive lens, wouldn't it make sense to go, I don't have five grand to buy that camera, but if you let me make payments to you, I can afford it. In fact, I'd be willing to pay you $6,000 if you let me make payments that fit my budget. That's called seller finance. The seller is financing you and allowing you to make payments. So Susan goes, holy crap, why didn't everybody, I'm literally 65 years old, why didn't anybody ever explain this to me? And I go, because nobody had an F-150 story to make you understand it. Now, some people will say to me, well, didn't Jose overpay for the property, right? Didn't he overpay for the truck? Why would he do that? Here's the thing you need to understand. The value of a property is never the purchase price. The value of the property is based on what you can do with it. And what Jose did with this $15,000 truck that was only worth five grand is Jose paid me 350 bucks a month and Jose went out into the field, he was a painter, and he made $7,000 a month as a painter using this truck. I look at Jose and I say, you dramatically underpaid for my truck because you created value with that truck I wasn't willing to go create. So I believe him paying 15 grand over time was actually underpriced. So I went back to Susan and I said, Susan, this is why I'm not gonna argue with you on your $110,000 number. You've got a $110,000 price in your mind. Everybody else is offering you $50,000. If I come up to that number, will you give me the terms that make sense, similar to what I gave the terms to Jose? She says to me, Yes, I will. I love this. I absolutely love this. This is amazing. This is what she asked me for. She says, I want $20,000 as a down payment and I want 8% interest and you can make payments to me. And what do I say? I say, Susan, you want your cake, right? You want your $110,000 and you want to eat it too. Meaning you want big down payment and a large interest rate. Where do I win in this scenario? You got the highest purchase price. I'm going to take over your tenants. You want a big, massive down payment and you want a big, massive interest rate. I'm probably, this is my, this is where my line, my fa other famous line came up was I said, I'm probably not your buyer. And I stepped back. I physically in the appointment, I stepped back and I said, I'm probably not your buyer. And I put my hands up, which is psychologically I'm withdrawing from her. And she goes, well, what would make sense for you? Okay. And I said, well, Susan, here's the thing. I, can we agree that this is, your house is not worth 110,000? She says, yes. I go, so you can agree I'm overpaying what anybody else is willing to pay. She goes, yes. And I go, so you've won, right? If you sell this to me for 110 grand, you've won. She goes, yeah. I go, here's what I want. I want principal only payments. This is why I never tell people 0% interest. I say principal only. So when I make a payment to you, it pays down. Okay. I want principal only and I will, I'm willing to give you $10,000 down if you, Susan, pay for the closing costs at the title company. And if you let me, this is where it gets really tricky, pay attention to this. If you let me pay you 
the $10,000 over the course of six months, I'll give you five grand. And six months later, I'll give you another five grand. So check out what she did. She agreed to these terms, okay? She gave me a 0% interest or principal only. She paid for the closing costs, so I'm into the deal, no money. I inherited tenants, so there's no money out of my pocket. I didn't have to renovate it. Still to this day, those tenants are still in the property. And what I had her do is not only sell or finance the 110,000, but she wanted a $10,000 down payment. I had her sell or finance her down payment to me. Interesting. So let's tie this back into camera equipment. So let's say Jose or Eric, you guys go out and you do a video for somebody, right? Let's say you go, I don't have the equipment for this. You go down to Tempe camera or you go down to somebody you go, I, I need to buy that equipment to go make money over here. Will you sell or finance this equipment to me? And they go, yes, but we want a down payment. And you go, can you wait a week for my down payment? And what you do is you take your equipment, you go make video content or photography for somebody, you get a chunk of money, you go, here's your down payment. They let you use the camera equipment in order to earn the down payment in order for them to give you the loan. Does that make sense? That's what I did with Susan. Susan let me go six months with these tenants. I make $1,000 a month net cash flow every single month on these tenants. So multiply that by six months. How much money do I have after six months? Six grand. Six grand. So in six months, I earned $6,000 cash flow from the tenants and I paid 5,000 of it to Susan. Six months later, I did the same exact thing. I paid her $5,000. This is a zero down, 0% zero interest seller paid closing costs deal that I did because I taught somebody what seller finance is by using an F-150 story. You can do anything in creative finance, okay? As long as you can explain to somebody what the benefits are. Now, how does this benefit um, Susan? Okay, this benefits Susan because, check this out, how did I figure out my monthly payments to her? Okay, my monthly payments to her, by the way, are $375 a month at 0% interest. Why is it $375 a month? Where did I come up with that number? Eric, do you know where I came up with that number? It's her remaining balance. Nope. This is, it's so simple, you'll never think of it. The reason why she wanted to sell the property is because she wanted to travel the country in her RV. Guess how much the average amount of money she spends on her RV rental spot per month? 375. 375 bucks a month. So I told her, what if I made a payment to you of $375 a month every month that for the rest of your life, you never have to worry about the RV rental expenses. And so that's what got Susan to give me $375 payments on a property that currently is rented out for $1,650 per month. Pretty powerful.